it's all started up and it's all burning off so yeah all right well back to the grind i guess i just got back from spring break and we have a whole bunch of stuff to do i'm currently sitting in our 9510 let's see if we can get this to start you can see there's a little bit of white stuff on the ground out there we uh the ground was dry this morning and then we were in our meeting and it started to snow and it covered the ground in snow again because it was dry this morning we were like oh maybe we can start hauling manure but this week we have a ton of stuff going on we have to hook everything up and we are going to be hauling cow manure this we're going to start this week so we have to get all the manure trucks we have eight manure trucks we have to pull them all in make sure they're greased up ready to go we have to hook up the grain drill which is right there we have to hook up the grain drill we have to hook up the chisel plow we have just a bunch of stuff to hook up we have to go get grain seed uh a lot of stuff because this snow it only put down half an inch maybe but just enough to make it muddy enough that we can't haul manure but it'll be dry again in a couple days so we're trying to get everything ready so in a couple days we can start hauling manure so but yeah you can join me today as we just get everything ready to haul manure and plant grain so uh yeah i'm gonna go help hook up the grain drill and then go hook up the chisel plow and then manure trucks and it's just a never-ending process so we got the skid steer we have to lift this up because it settled in the mud when it was muddy so we have to lift it up because the hitch isn't quite tall enough to go onto the back of that tractor so we're gonna lift it up and uh, put this block underneath see if he can uh, might just be able to go and hook right under that. There we go. Lifted it right up. Got to go up a little bit more. We're going to try and put this big block underneath this jack. All right, we've got the uh, block under it. He's going to park that and hop in this tractor and back over here. I have to lower this down a ways. So, see you in a minute. Okay. Let's see if this will drop in there. still plugging in the hoses and uh, he's just gonna pull it basically we're just pulling it out of the way so we're ready to plant and then I'm gonna take this and go hook up the chisel plow. I'm gonna drive back there you can look at our new this is our new planter and while I was gone last week they finished getting all of it plumbed up and done so everything's plumbed ready to go and I believe I'm not sure where they're at, but the other two planters are also plumbed up. There's one planter. So I think that is the one that we still have not done yet. So we've done two of them. This is the setup we had for where we, they were transloading. The two. We had to get rid of the vines from the potatoes that were sprouted. So we had to fill up this truck from the cellar, dump it onto here, and you can see these piles. These are just piles of vines and sprouts. And then we went, we basically ran them across our sorter and then loaded the semi with that, uh, with that truck or with that piler. And then right here we have, this is the other, the other planter that's all set up with the tanks and everything. Oh, the reason we haven't set up the, uh, that last planter that's right there 
The reason we haven't set that one up is because that is going to use the tractor that we just hooked to the grain drill. And we don't want to put the tanks and everything on it until after we planted grain. So he's going to go get that all set up for planting grain and then we'll plant grain. Then we'll hook it up, put the tanks on and have to do some quick plumbing before we actually get into uh, planting. It shouldn't be too hard to get that hooked up because we've done the other two. So now we know how we'd like to do it. So we just, we have all the stuff to do it. It's just going to be plumbing all the lines, putting the, putting the tanks and everything on. So shouldn't be too big a deal. But yeah, I'm going to go hook up the chisel plow. There's the chisel plow. So the reason we need to hook this up, well, we're going to be using it, but also it needs a little bit of repair because last, last fall when we were running it, the, uh, didn't come out of the ground and you can see right there the hitch is kind of bent and it, it broke off of this little brace right there so we need to pull it in the shop and do a little bit of repair to it because we're like oh we'll just buy a new hitch but a new hitch is like 10 grand so we're just gonna see if we can repair it well first thing I can see is this is not high enough so I'm gonna have to get close enough that I can hook the hydraulic lines up because that's what controls the height of this tongue. So we back up and hook it all up and then we'll uh, lift the tongue and put the pin in. So I lifted it up and I got the hitch it, or the pin in right there. So now I'm going to lift, put it back down and it should lift, ideally, it should lift that jack off the ground that now I can go fold the jack up and uh, I'll check all the rest of these hydraulics make sure they're the right spots and they're doing the right things but yeah get the chisel plow going okay I just parked the chisel plow we're not gonna be working on this right now uh, we have other things to work on Chris has got the drill up here but uh, yeah, we're trying to get all the manure trucks ready to go. We have these beaters right here, or right there. Those are the only ones we have to put on. The manure trucks are pretty much ready to go. We just need to pull them in, grease them. So that's what we're doing now. I can see some smoke, so let's go see what they're working on. All of our beds, all the manure beds, the beaters get wrapped up with twine because the dairy doesn't do a very good job of getting the twine off. Well, this is one way to get the twine off. We just uh, light it on fire. Soak it in diesel and stuff and set it on fire and the twine kind of burns off. So we're burning this one off. This one over here is on fire too. But it'll just burn the twine off. The only other option is to get a sawzall and run it along and try and cut the twine off. but. That doesn't seem to work super great. So we're gonna try the burn it off method and see how that works. We have one truck here. So we have, this is a mix of gas and diesel. And we're gonna show you how we, uh, how we burn these off. So we just gotta soak it good. We've soaked it once to let it seep down in. Now we're just putting a little bit more on so we can, so it'll light pretty good. But yeah, this is how we, this is how we burn it off. You have to be a little careful next to the bearings on each end. You don't want too much fire going up in there and burning your bearings out, but in the middle, that's just a metal shaft. So you can set that on fire and you're good to go. Because it's not straight gas, it does take a little bit to get going, but once it goes, the diesel burns for a long time. it it'll get it'll get going and then once it's burned for a while it'll kind of look like this one <clears throat> you have to you have to kind of scrape it a little bit as it's burning to get it to actually get down in but you can see that this one's been burning for a while and you can see the shaft and there's hardly anything left just a little bit right there but pretty much 
burned all that off. And it's just a lot easier than cutting it off with a knife. So we just use this little scraper to kind of scrape off what has burned so new stuff can burn. Now that we've uh, let it sit for a minute, it's all started up and it's all burning off. So yeah, we'll let this burn and kind of mix it a little bit. And should, shouldn't take too long to get this all burned off of here. So we're all just running around doing different things. We have the chisel plow over here. It had a flat tire. So we pulled that off, reseated that. We have our one and only 10 wheeler with a bulk bed on it, but we have to clean it out because we got to go get some grain seed. So we got to get this cleaned out, put it in the cellar so it can dry. And then we have all the trucks over here. We're burning all the, uh, the stuff off. And then we have a truck in the shop that we are greasing and getting everything ready. So then we have the loader here because we have to grease all the little hinge points here, 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 down there, all the little hinges on the bucket. There's about 25 greasers on this thing everywhere there's a joint because this will be deep in the manure. You can see from the past, the manure is gonna be about here so you gotta make sure to grease it up really good or else that manure gets in and just destroys everything gotta walk back and get our other loader so we can grease it as well because this year we're doing things a little differently we're only gonna have two loaders see we have three we have this volvo back here if i can point to the right spot but it's old and kind of worn out so we don't like to use it but this year we're gonna just have people in the loaders full time to fill the trucks. That way the truck drivers don't have to get out. We're actually gonna save a whole bunch of time by doing so. But uh, yeah, I gotta get in this, our other loader, and uh, we gotta pull it up front and we gotta grease it as well, so. The service in all these trucks is, well, greasing. So that's what he's doing. And then we're checking, checking our bearings. So we got looking at this bearing and you can see a little gap right there. And I wiggled it with the uh, crowbar the shaft goes up and down so we got to change this bearing because I mean that would run for a couple days maybe but then you'd be changing it covered in manure so we're just going to change it now before it's all nasty and uh, we'll check the rest of them that one is hard to check the top ones don't usually go out as much though but uh, we'll check the rest of them and see how they are but all the things you got to look for when you're servicing the truck. Well, we can't get this off. We uh, took all the stuff out, but this bearing is just seized to the shaft. So, Trevor's getting the torch ready for me. I got to uh, try and cut this thing off of the shaft. We cut a nice groove all the way through that and we got it to turn. So now we're gonna just try and tap it off from the back through the through the bolt holes, see if we can get it off. Yeah, we got it off. We had the pound on it pretty hard. I was cleaning it up. We have a new bearing right here. This block looks old and nasty, but we just put a new bearing inside the block, so it should be good. Have one. We had one bearing left. We had a bearing on here but it was a lock ring bearing and there wasn't enough room for this little snap ring to go into that groove. So we had one of these non, it's just a set screw bearing. So we put it in the block, got it on, we just have to tighten it up and then put this little snap ring on. Focus, it's not gonna focus, there we go. And then we'll be back in business. have our grain cart out here now now that we got that truck done and we were getting it ready because we got to use it to fill the grain drill and we got looking and greasing everything on it and we found a bearing out on it I don't know if you'll be able to see it it's the one right there on the very end of the on the very end of that auger the bearing is out it has a 
there's a big gearbox and then there's a bearing so it's the one right behind that auger so it's it could be a pain in the butt to change but we're only gonna have to use this to unload six trucks worth of grain into the drill so we aren't gonna change that bearing right now and we will change it after the reason we're not worried about a few things here and there is because we are in a mad dash rush to get everything planted. We have a month to get basically all, well, we have a month until we start planting potatoes. So we have to plant 1500 acres of wheat and we have to haul all the manure out on, to, on all of that before we can use that new planter over there. So there's some things that we're like, yeah, we'll wait and fix that until we're done because it's gonna be a pain in the butt and it's gonna take a lot of time because we gotta get haul manure this week or we're not gonna be done in time. Well, I hope you guys are enjoying this video. It's kind of a, a smorgasbord of everything we have going on. Right now I've got the Karat Chisel Plow, the Lemkin Karat 9, and we are putting it in the, uh, in the shop so that we can change the hitch and fix the hitch because it broke and bent because we gotta get going on the spud ground tomorrow so we can actually get it all done and worked up in time to get the potatoes planted. Because we're kinda worried that we won't, that we won't be able to keep ahead of the planters because normally we only run two planters, but this year we are running three and we're not sure if we can keep ahead. So we're gonna try and get going before we start on the manure so that he can get a jump start on it. But I'm trying to get this backed into our shop. All right, he's, he's putting the hitch down and then I'm going to use these little hydraulic -y buttons to try to lower it down. We gotta get this pin out so we can change the, so we can change the tongue. So get the pin out, then I'll pull forward just a little bit. Hitch. All right, so we welded this brace in here to hopefully stop this little bend in our frame from wobbling. We also welded this back up. My phone focus, there we go. Welded that back up. So fingers crossed we don't have any problems with that as long as we don't uh, leave it in the ground and turn and break it again. They also put this, uh, while I was doing that, they put this different style hitch on. It's got a tighter tolerance hole, but we will use the old pin, but we still need to get a new pin. But we're gonna hook it back up. All right, we were able to get it hooked up. Took some jiggle into the tractor, but got it in. And then they uh, were just greasing it. So the main points is this ram, both ends, and then there's a little bushing right there, a pin. And those are the most important grease points because this moves up and down every time you get to the end of the field. So you don't want that to seize up. So we're trying to get those greased. If they don't take grease, then you have to take this pin out and uh, clean the grease, the grease tube and all the grease holes out. So hopefully we can get grease in them. Well, they weren't able to take grease in the back here, but we're gonna run it. And once it's warmed up from running it for a day, we will try to get grease in it. But that's the end of the day. I gotta go home and get some stuff done. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.